This was the Odroid project at the end of the last video, with the first computer mounted at the base of the unit and the HDPlex 180 watt power supply mounted behind it. This leaves room for a second Odroid H2 Plus mounted above the first. The second Odroid computer has now arrived in its well packaged box along with an 8GB DDR4 sodium memory card. Also ordered up was a Transcend 128GB M2-2880 PCIe NVMe SSD from CCL Online to complete the computer. Unpacking the box is very straightforward as it comes wrapped in bubble wrap and there's an anti-static packaging around the computer itself. To assemble the computer, all that needs to be done after you unwrap it is to slot in the memory card, to affix the real-time battery clock using the auto cable slot, and to then fix on the underside of the board the SSD. Care of course should be taken to unwrap and fit this on an anti-static mat. The Odroid also comes with a short but explanatory piece of text to explain the layout of the board, what each of the connectors actually does and how to fit the SSD and the memory card. As you can see, the board comes with two Ethernet ports, four USB ports, a power socket, two monitor ports, one HDMI and one display port, and the usual audio ports. Also, as you can see on the right hand side, there are also two SATA ports, which allow you to connect either SSDs or hard disks. The memory cards are slotted in on the underside of the board. While the Odroid board does support dual channel memory, you can get away quite nicely with hitting a single DDR4 SODIM. In this model we're fitting a single 8GB card, but you can of course get two 16GB cards to take the unit up to a full 32GB. The M2 slot sits just above the memory cards where you can plug in your 128 NVMe SSD. And here we see the second Odroid board mounted in above the first in the main rack. Both boards are driven by the same power supply. The Odroid power supply that can be supplied by Odroid themselves is a 15 volt 4 amp power supply. We're driving this using the HD Plex power supply, which is a 19 volt 8 amp power supply, quite adequate to supply both boards. I've also made use of the Odroid cooling fan. I was most impressed with the ability of this cooling fan to run quietly and still keep the Odroid very cool. My original plan was to mount a Noctua fan at the back of the case to keep all four Odroids cool, but for the moment I'm going to go with this single fan on the two unit model. Next we're going to mount the whole unit inside its 10.5 inch rack frame. I've obtained a tray for the bottom of the frame to allow the whole unit to sit much neater. This does reduce the width of the unit by a few millimetres but it's still more than enough to fit in two of these units. Here we see the completed first node in the left hand side of the VAC. And having installed Windows 10 Pro on the second Odroid, the unit is now operational. The power switches are temporarily mounted on the front of the unit, which are going to be replaced by a 3D printed fascia to allow the power supply units to be mounted permanently 
and to provide adequate airflow through the unit. The cooling fan at the back of the frame is connected to the Odroid at the top of the frame. In the next stage of the project, I'm considering replacing the HTPlex 180 watt power supply with a single 400 watt supply that should be able to drive all four Odroid computers. But that's it for today. Thank you for watching.